The Quran says, You are busy piling up, calculating, developing your careers, your money, your occupation, your wealth until you visit the graves. Think about it. When was the last time that you went to a funeral? Was it your mother? Was it your father? Was it your grandfather? Was it your uncle? Was it your cousin? Was it your friend? Was it your wife? Was it your husband? The last time that you visited the grave when you went to a funeral and you saw that person whom you loved that was laughing, crying, live, boasting, wealthy, educated, denying, arrogant, whatever they were. What was the demeanor of the people when you walked in that funeral home, when that person was stretched out in their last suit what was the demeanor? Were the people cracking jokes? Were they dancing? Were they clapping and singing songs? No. Silence. Melancholy. Trauma. Why? Because every person that walked in that room, seeing that person stretched out, the first thing they thought about was not the person. The first thing they thought about was that one day this will be me and then after you go to the funeral house if you got the guts if you're able to do so you go to the grave and now this is another scenario and you say to yourself is that it i mean 50 60 years scraping struggling scheming lying stealing fornicating jumping up and down begging working and this is the end of it I mean, is this what's going to happen to me? Are they going to be dropping me into a, a hole in the ground? A hole in the ground. The same hole that a cat digs after it defecates. Just a little deeper. But for the same reason. The cat digs a hole because the cat has dignity. Something that human beings don't seem to have. Instinctively, the cat digs a little hole, covers it up. <laughs> Humans have got to be taught to do that, but it's for the same reason. So you and I, we're going into a hole a little deeper than the one the cat dug. And all the people that's crying, pulling out their hair, screaming, almost acting like they're falling in the thing with you. They want to just jump in there with you. Not really though, you know, it's all a, it's all an act. Cause ain't nobody really gonna jump in there and stay in there. They don't love you that much. <laughs> and then after all the shoveling, after all the shoveling get done and they fill it up and the, the box, you can't even see the box no more, the coffin, the coffin that costs 5,000. I don't know what they, what they, what did they burn somebody the $5,000 coffin for? I mean, if I was a funeral director, after they left, I would dig them back up and put them in another box and take that box back. <laughs> and, and honestly, I'm telling you, that's what they do. <laughs> yeah. So after all the money and all the drama, and they dig that hole and put you in there and cover you up, so it really means that after all this time and the people walk away from that grave, it's over. What about that person in the grave? What's happening? Because you know and I know that death is almost like sleeping. Death is like sleeping. Your body is gone. Your body is dead. Your spirit is gone but your consciousness is there. Yes, brothers and sisters, you and I are going to know when the people put us in that box and put us in the grave, we are going to know 
Your spirit is gone. You can't shout. You can't call out. You can't say, don't leave me here. But you're going to be hearing and you're going to be seeing because that's a different kind of consciousness. But you can't move. And in that grave, this is when the real trauma is going to begin. Because there's a reason for humans to go inside the grave. If the Creator wanted to, He could have caused us to live and then disappear into the, into the atmosphere. But He didn't. He caused us to go into another womb called the tomb. You started out in the womb of your mother and you wind up in the womb of the earth called the tomb. From the womb to the tomb. This is the whole trip. Two angels will come. Munkar and Nakir, the, the, the interrogators of the Akhirah. They will come and they will sit that soul up. We have questions for you and you must answer these questions. They ask him, Man Rabbuk? And that soul will reply, Rabbi Allah. My Lord was Allah. They'll say, Wa Madinuk? What was your religion? They'll say, My religion was Islam. They will say, Wa Man Nabiyuk? Who is your Prophet? And the soul will respond, My Prophet was Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And they will ask him, How did you come to know of these things? And they will respond, I read the Book of Allah. I read the Quran. I read the Kitab of Allah. I read Kalam Allah. And I believed it and I declare it to be true. And then a voice from above the heavens, from above the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will respond, Sadiq al Amin, my slave. My slave has spoken the truth. My slave has spoken the truth. So make sure that his carpets are spread out from Jannah in his grave. Make his gardens beautiful for him. Open the grave expanse for him. So a door that is from Jahannam will be opened and that person will be able to feel the fire, will be able to feel the fire of hell coming in and it will be responded to him. The angels will tell him or her that you see this door. This is what could have been your eternal abode had you disbelieved and disobeyed Allah. And then that door will be shut, permanently sealed, never to be opened again. And then a door to Jannah will be opened. The perfume of Jannah will come pouring into their grave and it will be said to them, this is your final abode because of your belief. Because of your belief, subhanAllah. And it will be said to him, rejoice in the delights for you because this is the day that you were promised by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the day that you were promised. A beautiful figure, gorgeous, will come and sit down next to them. Will come and sit down next to them. And they will look at that person and say, who are you? You are so beautiful. So I've never seen something or someone so beautiful in my entire life. Who are you? And that person will respond, I am your good deeds. I am your good deeds and Allah has sent me to keep you company until the day that you meet him because you kept your promises. And that soul will continue to cry out every single day until the day of judgment. That soul will cry out, my Lord, my Lord, establish the hour. Establish the hour right now. I want the day of judgment to come now because I want my promises. I want what was promised to me. I want it now. This is the state of those who believe.